Hey team, we've got another coach interview here and this one's going to be a goodie because the player involved here, Lucas Herbert, has got some unique things about his goal swing and Dom as a party here, his coach, hasn't tried to coach them out of him and it's just been um, a, huge, a huge success as a result. So Dom, great to have you here. Thanks for the invite, Bain. Really excited to um, discuss Lucas's, as you say, unique golf swing. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. So Lucas Herbert, he has, um, I mean, he's sort of burst onto the scene, really. We've known about it for years, but he's burst on the scene over the past year. He won in Dubai at the start of the year, played really well at Saudi the next week, went to New Zealand pretty much after that to play in the New Zealand Open, and since then hasn't been able to play. But you've been teaching him for about 10 years, haven't you? Yeah, so at the age of 13, Lucas is now 24, 25 in December. Um, I was lucky enough to have him come into the pro shop where I was and, and uh, the rest is history. I think I've been fortunate that he did that and he feels, he doesn't say too often, that he was fortunate to walk into my pro shop and, you know, we, we started a great relationship, a great bond at that point and I saw a lot in a, a young country kid who swung it um, fairly uniquely. But that was his way, Baden, and I, I was really careful not to lose his DNA, as I call it. Um, so I've seen that happen so many times over the years is, you know, if you try and teach a kid like that, you know, a model swing, I think he just loses all awareness of where the club is coming to impact and he can do a lot of harm to these, these sort of players. So, I mean, we've done a lot of work um, trying to improve it over the years. Um, and certainly keep it within the parameters that, that we think is, is what we need to, to have it to be competitive on the world stage. And, you know, it's still evolving. Uh, it, it all takes time. You know, one of the challenges is having some time, like we have this, this year, actually, to actually do some sort of block training work because these kids, they just play so much, Baden, and, and it's hard to get a lot of work done a lot of times. A hundred percent, but hopefully you've got enough in because winged foot is next week. This is going to be his... Fourth major, I think, or fifth, is it? Fifth major, yeah. Fifth major. Right, so wing foot next week, which, you know, is going to be a brute of a test. We know the rough will be long, the tees will be back, and it's going to be really exciting. But let's jump straight into his golf swing and have a chat about what you've done with it. Can you see your star pupil there? Yeah, got him here. So on the left side, he's a young, uh, wiry 18-year-old back in 2014. That's the week after... He came second to John Rahm in the Eisenhower Trophy individual part, so the World Amateur, if you like. And then uh, on the right is January, about two weeks prior to his win in Dubai this year. Okay, great. Well, it would be great to look at it when he was obviously playing really well. And we were talking before, and he was playing really well here, obviously. I mean, to come second to John Rahm, you've got to be doing something right. But there were a few things that you were concerned about with this goal swing, what, um, what were the major things that you were working on at this point or you felt like you needed to work on to get this right? Yeah, I guess, I mean, we've spoken in the past about I'm really strong on allowing a player to have their own DNA. And I, I look at Lucas, I mean, I've worked with him for probably four or five years at this stage. And, I mean, his golf swings, um, yeah, it's still... still in that position at the top that no one overly likes. Um, but, you know, I feel with a guy like Lucas, if you change that too much and make it a model swing, he just, he's not himself. And he, he's got, he loses all ability to, to get the club back onto the ball and, and know where it's going. So I really, w I've worked with him all the way through just on trying to improve what you see on the left there. And, and I'll show you on the right sh soon. And you'll see there is some improvement. But, you know, that's the way he sees the game is played. And, you know, I've been really strong to allow him to do that. But keep it within parameters. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's the big thing for, for a guy with so much talent like this is, is not take everything away from him. He's got to swing it his own way. Um, and, you know, you, back here, I mean, he used to hit the ball... It was pretty big. You can see because he drops it so far inside and gets a bit stuck. You know, he used to really shake the ball long way right to left, mm. which was, you know, that was his security. He, he knew which way it was going. But as he improved, you know, we, we needed to do some things with that. We needed to neutralise the ball flight a lot more. Um, you know, as he got better and better, he, he understood that he needed to be able to hit a fade, hit it both ways, hold it up in the wind, do, do all sorts of, you know, get back to pins on the left and the right. So... 
he really became more open to, to trying to make some improvements. And, you know, when you show the swing on the right, you'll see that the club coming down is much more in front of his body. Uh, and, you know, it's even higher there, obviously. And then, you know, he's still got his, his move, which is that drop down from, from that position. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's obviously a lot shorter too, which makes it um, more repeatable for him. And then, you know, as we come down halfway down on that right, you'll see that the hands are more in front of his body. So he can neutralise the flight a lot more. He's not, you know, in there, he really tends to have to hit a big draw and, and um, you know, now we can hit it both ways a little bit more. And certainly we talk about a one-yard draw as his stock shot, whereas the one on the left there as an 18-year-old, you know, that, that was really drawing... You know, he knew he hit it down the right rough and try and draw it back into the middle of the fairway off the tee. So it's it's not a game that's going to you know stack up and be consistent week in week out. And it's definitely the trend now, isn't it? That um, you know players don't want to see a big right to left shape. It's almost disappearing on tour, if you ask me. I, I was watching Xander Shoffley the other day, and he seems to be you know pretty much the last guy out there really you know, hitting big sort of right to left shapes. Like you look at a guy like John Rahm or uh, DJ, obviously, Brooks Kepka. all these guys hit these little power fades these days because they just want so much more control over it. And you can just see with Lucas's old action as it fell here, obviously the arms are probably pinned to him and just trapped. This is all just trapped behind him slightly coming in here. And there's a lot of young kids like to do it. They love to hit the big hoop, don't they? The big right to left shape. They drop the club in a long way. And then you can see on the way through here, you know, this is all extending probably further out and away from him at that point, which is, you know, very much a consequence of what happens on the way back. But this, this one here, the arms, these are so much more in front of him as it falls. And then coming in here, the thing I really, really noticed when I was looking at this, Tom, is just the exit points are so different through here, aren't they? Like this is, this is sort of a classic uh, little, you know, half a, one, half a metre fade as the arms are in here and the club's out, whereas this is much more a start the ball right and probably draw it five to six metres through the air. Yeah, you're spot on. I think there's two things to say there. I think one of the things that, that one of the reasons why the guys are hitting it straight and straight is that the, the technology is allowing them to do that. The ball's going straighter. They're, getting, they're creating more distance with the technology. So Lucas, yep. as a young kid at 13, 14, was... As you can see, even at 18, there's not much of him. So I gave him a real license to create club head speed and, and, and get distance. And his way of doing that was to drop it inside. That felt stronger for him. To hit yep. a bigger draw, he felt he could get more distance, which I'm glad we did um, because, you know, he hits it to, uh, sorry, 300 to 310 yards carry with his driver, which you yeah. don't have to do nowadays to compete. So... Yeah, even I'm coaching a nine-year-old girl, uh, sorry, a yeah, nine-year-old girl is playing off 12 at the moment. And really, a, a lot of what I've done with her in the first 12 months that I've worked with her is create club head speed. And I did that with Lucas, and I'm so happy I did do that because once they get to 18, it's, I find it's really hard to, to develop that club head speed. But, you know, between the ages of, you know, whenever they start to 14, 15, I think that's the time to create club head speed. And then, as you can see with Lucas, start to get it into the parameters that we want, but he's still got, you know, the lag and the clubs, you know, the speed, ball speed that, that we need to compete nowadays. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, I mean, it's, as you say, it's just the way things are going. You've got to be able to rip it out there. We're actually doing a webinar in a couple of weeks um, and a partnership with Super Speed Golf. And um, we're going to talk to uh, the founder there about the modern game and, and how speed can be created, but how it's just, you know, it's dominating you know, all aspects of the game. You know, people want to be able to hit their 9-9, you know, 160 yards now sort of thing. It's not just about driver. So, yeah, it's definitely, um, it's pervasive. It's everywhere through the game now. It's really, really interesting. I just wanted to ask you one last thing about his goal swing. Um, is, what do you, like, something that's just, you know, obviously on trend at the moment when you look at DJ and even, you know, John Rahm, is this incredibly, sh you know, very shut club face. And, Lucas is exactly the opposite. Like, this is pretty rare on tour, isn't it, where you see the face this open and that much toe hang that way and then coming in with this much loft on it. How have you guys sort of thought about that? I mean, I said to you previously that I love open club faces. I actually think they provide so much more versatility and allow you to hit so many more shots 
Um, how do you guys think about the club face there? Yeah, it's a really good point you make. I've really been strong with Lucas from day one that he body releases the club. Uh, I'm not, I, I don't like handsy players. I don't think they're consistent. So, I mean, Lucas, you can see how much turn he's creating there through impact. Mm. And, and I guess, it, it, as you know, Bain, it's, it's all about matchups in the golf swing. So I don't mind that face where it is. Yeah. As as he, and and it, because of that, it enables him to turn really hard through the golf ball. Mm. Uh, and, and I like that. And that works for him. You know, it's not for everyone. I, I, I teach, you know, all my students, you know, differently. But for him, it was always something that he liked. He liked the strength that it created through impact. Um, I mean, he's a country Victorian kid and he grew up hitting balls off bad lies and, and everything else. So I think all that, you know, uh, resonates the, the way he swings a club now and, and why. Yep. 100%. And, like, I think a lot of people assume if you get the face open, you're going to be, you know, flipping the club or something. But you can clearly see that he doesn't do that at all. He's, as you said, it's a... It's a body release, so the, the, the shoulders, chest and arms are pushing around there, and this is staying pretty much square onto the centre of his body as it goes around. So, it's uh, yeah, I, I really, really like it. But it's, um, it's, it's really, really great to see. I think that these subtle changes have obviously helped him neutralise the ball flight without completely re- reorganising everything and changing everything, Dom. So, it's just, um, it's just obviously... I mean, and I know that you work very much as a team. You've got you know, a psych and physios and all sorts of things working on him all the time. And it's obviously been incredibly successful to this point. Yeah, he's been fantastic like that in that he, he really invests in himself and his team. You know, Lucas, he wants to be, you know, top 10 player in the world. Um, he wants to win majors and yep. he'll invest to do that. You know, he's only young, he's 24. We had a little bit of a setback this year, obviously, but... You know, that's his goal. And uh, I love the fact that he'll invest himself and, he, and he'll back himself in. Um, you know, he's not, he doesn't want to be a journeyman or a pro out there for the next 20 years, you know, just keeping yeah. a card. Uh, you know, he, he wants to be a really good player. And I've always taught him that way. Um, and, you know, I think his short game, you know, if you look at his stats, his putting stats last year from the European Tour, it's just off the charts how good he putts it. His, his short game chipping pitching's fantastic, drives it long. So, you know, what we've seen is when all aspects of this game are on, world class. And it's just a matter of getting them, you know, to be there, you know, on a certain week of the year and, and, he, and he can win. And that's what I like about the way, you know, the way he goes about it. No, it's fantastic. You've just done an incredible job. I think the thing I love about him, which is something that's almost indefinable, I think, is that he's got an X factor. Like, he hits mercurial golf shots he he's just got this thing about him which is um he's far from robotic he's just like he's got this x factor that you know that he's going to come out he, he could be the kind of guy that could miss two cuts in a row and win in the third week sort of thing so i think guys like that you've always got to watch out for so mate good luck next week i think it's going to be a massive test for him at wing foot um great golf course and you know he's got the skills to do it having not played much over the past sort of eight months will be a test but i think uh yeah, it's going to be exciting to watch. I appreciate it, Baden. And, um, you know, great job with the platform. I think uh, speaking on behalf of a lot of other pros, mate, we're really enjoying uh, using the platform, doing all the online lessons that we're doing and, you know, what it allows me to do with Lucas to communicate when he's over in the States and, and away is just phenomenal, mate. Well done. Great job. Thanks, Dom. And, yeah, great to have you on board. And we'll do this again. Obviously, we'll watch his progress and uh, we'll break it all down again. Love to, mate. Thanks, mate.